Oh no, it's so scary. Oh. Five Nights at Freddy's is a horror indie game released in 2014. You play as a security guard who has to survive through the night by tracking a bunch of manic sentient robot animals using security cameras and by closing doors and flicking on lights which are powered by an ever-draining power meter. Because video game, I guess. It really is as simple as that. There's no player movement, so the entire experience is pretty much based around managing your power while tracking the machines. The goal being to survive from midnight till 6am in game for, you guessed it, Five Nights, which takes about 10 minutes of real time per day. And I do admit, it's quite a novel idea. It's not a typical horror setting like a haunted mansion or an abandoned hospital. And being forced to look at and track your potential killers, in a similar way to Slender or SCP Containment Breach, while also being completely powerless, is an awesome setup for a game like this. The visual and audio design is all pretty stellar, and the fact that the entire game was built by only one guy is pretty impressive. But things quickly start to fall apart for me as the game adds more and more to this conceit. While the fan theories and the underlying plot is pretty interesting, the reason as to why everything is happening seems so contrived to me. I know it seems kind of petty to pick apart things like this, but context is what makes me care about the whole situation. It's pretty much the deciding factor as to whether I will want to keep playing the game or not, especially when it comes to horror. It's just the little things like, why does keeping a door closed use energy? Or if the guy on the phone knew about this whole killer robot thing, why has no one done anything about it? There's nothing to worry about. Uh, you'll be fine. Uh, the animatronic characters here do get a bit quirky at night. They'll probably try to forcefully stuff you inside a Freddy Fazbear suit. But you know what, I can kind of forgive this picky shit. If I can almost forgive nonsensical bollocks like the Star Child and Mass Effect 3, why should this be any exception? But the thing that gets me most about this game is how utterly boring it is. I admit, there's a certain level of tension and build-up the first time you sit down and play the game, because the unknown is always what's most scary in anything horror-based. You don't know what's gonna happen when these creatures get you, and that makes it all the more tense the closer and closer they get to grabbing you and shoving you in an empty animal suit. Then you do find out what happens. Yeah, it's a jump scare. The easiest, laziest way to scare someone. The jump scare is nothing more than a primal response. You don't really have a choice how you react to it. A sudden loud noise of course is gonna make you jump out of your skin. Remember those screamers people used to email and post around when they thought it was cool? Yeah. It's the same thing. You have that initial hit of adrenaline, but it's quickly followed by a, oh, fuck you. Horror shouldn't be about throwing loud noises and spinny, flashy shapes in your face randomly. It should be built around something more. But again, this is just me. I know plenty of people are happy with how predictable and stagnant the majority of the horror genre is today. Personally, I find fucked up imagery and intelligent use of sound much more effective than any tired jump scare. And there was something about the way that animatronic creatures were animated that gradually made me think of them as more comical than scary. Hello! Oh, you cheeky rascals, you come back here. I swear, those gosh darn munchkins really like to play mean tricks on me. <laughs> <laughs> it does piss me off how people can be so complacent with the horror genre, bigging themselves up to just accept that a chair moving a little bit is enough to warrant their hard-earned money. But I'm getting distracted, back to the bear game thing. I am very picky when it comes to horror. It really needs to be something special to impress me, which makes the ultimate failure of Five Nights even more upsetting. It was so close to being something truly special, but it's the execution that lets it down. You know, it's not even a problem that this game alone has. I'm struggling to think of any horror property that can maintain the scare momentum after showing you everything it has up its sleeve. Because the more you play Five Nights at Freddy's, the more you get into a rhythm. And the more you get into that rhythm of power management and the like, the less you think about the atmosphere and the immediate threat. And by then, the scares are gone. Failing becomes more of a chore than a scary experience, because you don't want to hear that stupid asshole go through the same bit of boring dialogue again. Speaking of that guy, what's the deal with him? Sorry, I haven't spoken to you in a while. I was just finishing my recording session for the next How to Train Your Dragon movie. So, uh, yeah, keep pressing the lights or whatever and do the thing. And try not to be killed by the manic, demonic, murderous, animatronic robots or whatever. So, yeah, you do that. Okay, cool. Have a good one, man. He hello At one point I was playing and the game totally cheated me as well. And look at this, I, I can see that bird fucker right there. But because I turn off the lights for half a second, I instantly fail. And it's super telegraph when the game decides that you're fucked. It makes it so you can't close the doors or do anything. 
So it's just a case of, well, I guess I better open and close the camera to get this shit over with. So I guess now's the part where I have no choice but to at least mention the horrible fandom this game has miraculously spawned purely from existing and getting the coverage that it has. It's what happens when an army of immensely popular YouTubers introduce an indie game to the stupid masses. It's like the fandoms need to play catch up for only just gaining the exposure. I won't harp on about this for too long, seeing as there will be a future video coming up that fits in perfectly with this topic in a more general way, so I don't want to repeat myself. But I'll summarise everything you need to know about what this fandom can be like with this one simple picture. Five Nights at Freddy's is another classic case of the fan reaction and exposure being much more interesting than the game itself. And while there are pockets of cool ideas and story beats here and there, when it comes down to it, the end product just isn't quite worth the fuss. To me, it ends up being something that's more entertaining to watch other people play in highly edited little 10 minute segments than it is to actually sit down and play myself. And while there will be people who BOO! ROAR! SCARY SCREAM NOISES! What was I saying? Oh, who cares? Five Nights at Freddy's, more like five nights of using YouTube culture to gain exposure, am I right? Uh, yeah. So what do you think? Was I a little too harsh on that gosh darn bear freak? Or was I not harsh enough? What do you like or dislike about the game? Whatever it is, feel free to start a discussion in the comments below. I'll be watching like a bear or, or a bird or a, a rabbit or a, a fox thing. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. All comments and ratings are appreciated. Make sure to check out some of my other videos. I'll see you next time. Bye. Well, I thought that game was pretty scary and cool. Fuck you, your opinion's wrong. You drew that picture that I showed earlier, didn't you? No. Maybe. Yeah. Why am I not even surprised? Oh, oh no, it, it's so scary. Oh! <laughs>